Hey everybody, I'm Sean Robinson. I'm Carson Gruwa. Welcome to Living the Line. And uh, today uh, we're going to have a very quick video, uh, but uh, we had some news for you today. You might have seen in the feed already uh, that our Kickstarter for Eric Creek's The Exile is live right now. And uh, we are, this book is going to be distributed uh, internationally through English language bookstores and comic stores. Uh, but as always, we are also doing a uh, a pre-sale through Kickstarter, and we're hoping to raise the funds uh, necessary to print uh, the book. And um, one of the things that we wanted to do is uh, talk a little bit about uh, Eric Creek's last book. Uh, and his last book, In the Pines, uh, came out from Fanographics in 2017 in English. And uh, as actually, I believe the Dutch uh, original was uh, came out in 2015. And um, this is Eric's longest book uh, up to this point. And um, this is actually pretty close to the original uh, design and everything that was done with Scratch Books, which was the publisher in uh, the Netherlands. And uh, so we're gonna take a little bit, uh, a look at this uh, today as a sort of preview for The Exile. Although they're, as we're gonna see during our flip through, they are very different books. Uh, have you read uh, In the Pines? Yeah, it's been a while, and we, we just decided to do this last minute, so I haven't refreshed my mind on it. I'll <laughs> apologize to the audience, but yeah, I have read it. Um, I thought it was a beautiful, beautiful book at the time, and uh, I think visually, like his style is similar enough in my memory to The Exile uh, that there's there's continuity there, but my memory of the story is that it's quite different. Yeah, but, very, very different, and different in setting. Uh, but yeah, you can see a lot of the commonalities and sort of things that he's developing that he really brought to fruition on the exile. And, uh, you know, Eric Creek has been uh, an artist for a very long time. I believe that, you know, he's been working since the early 90s and, uh, you know, works as an illustrator and has done a lot of comics as well. Uh, but uh, the exile is his first long form book, um, you know, uh, in the pines, murder ballads, five murder ballads as you can probably guess, is actually five murder ballads. So it's essentially like a, a short story collection. And uh, so let's take a look. So yeah, here's the exile, or uh, Eric Creek's previous book to the exiles is In the Pines, Five Murder Ballads. And like I was saying in English, uh, this came out from Fanographics in 2017, uh, but this was uh, Creek's 2015 book in Dutch. And uh, if you're familiar with uh, murder ballads, you probably know from the title what the uh, you know, what, what it's in re reference to. And basically this is a form of song that was very common uh, all throughout Europe and also became common in America as well. And uh, a form of song in which, you know, a ballad you're obviously familiar with like storytelling ballad uh, and then a murder ballad specifically like a, a song in which the, there's a murder that takes place in there. And, um, if you've seen any of the uh, previous or uh, any of the uh, stuff that we've made public from the exile so far, you can see that a lot of uh, Eric's interests are represented by uh, the music. And uh, this is Pretty Polly and the Ship's Carpenter. Here's uh, the titular Pretty Polly. Um, and uh, unlike the exile, this has uh, a single spot color with the black in each one of these stories. Hmm. And uh, you can see that uh, Creek's line work, he has a tendency towards, uh, you know, fairly like uh, high contrast value delineation. Uh, I think yeah, that it, it kind of looks like woodblock cuts a little bit or something like that to me. Right. Um, and it, it looks like he's probably doing, I, I don't know, I'm sure you've actually seen the files, but it, it looks like at least on on this one, I don't know about the exile because it's got a couple colors in it, but it looks like those were probably just done as two separate ink drawings and then one of them was converted to a tone or is he doing the tone right. digitally? Uh, I, I'm not sure what his uh, process is right now, but I know that he's probably done both of those things and you can see that these are essentially all, you know, textures that you could render with uh, just your ink tools. And so yeah. like, we've got these bursts of light coming in here. And, uh, you know, this could be done with a razor blade or, you know, white or possibly like a digital 
alterations after the fact. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure if he's doing an overlay process or what, but uh, in the exile anyway, he's using this color to emotional uh, effect. Yeah. And so, you know, you'll have three or four colors uh, per page on top of the uh, one color ink drawing. Uh, it long reminds me of, of like the um, the artwork from V for Vendetta. Mm -hmm. David Lloyd. Yeah, David Lloyd's art in V for Vendetta. That super like high contrast, but everything's kind of chunky. Right. But you still get a lot of detail and nuance. It's like a really good combo. It, for the exile, like on the files that you were getting, what, were they separated out or were the colors coming? Like, was that already uh, kind of put together? Yeah, uh, almost everything is uh, baked in at this point. And so when, when I'm receiving the files from them, uh, everything is flattened and uh, okay. ready to go. So there's not a lot of uh, manipulation, you know, I'm going to do after the fact. Uh, but uh, something like this, you can really see where, you know, as an artist, he's using that second tone, not just for, um, you know, emotional effect, but also to get in some of these secondary values. Like, you know, we've got this high contrast horse here with a little bit of feathering on the edge. So you essentially got the white and the black and then this slight middle value that's then being modeled additionally with that second color and uh, a lot of that happening on uh, the exile as well yeah and the and, way he's uh, using it compositionally just to like get those tombstones to pop out is like white right. you know i just i when when i had seen this book i really loved the look of it and then a sub of ours had recommended uh his his other book i'm blanking on the name right now Gutsman. Yeah, Gutsman. And I, I went and got Gutsman. And I was like, oh, this is really cool the way he uses like iconography and the word balloons. And then you you like, uh, like almost immediately were like, hey, check out this Exile book. What do you think of this one? And I, I finally put together that it was the same guy on all right. three. Um, and yeah, I just like he works in some different modes. And I love everything he does. He, I mean, obviously, that look at that, that panel at all, well, all three of them, but the compositions are impeccable. Yeah, and uh, you can really see his eye for, you know, single illustration work, sort of training him for these high impact moments here. Uh, and also like a real, you know, new eye for detail in terms of like even down to like what he's using, the font that he's using for the header here, uh, the construction of the bridge and things like that. And the exile, you know, so these are all sort of American uh songs that are happening you know taking place in uh in america in you know the uh 19th century uh early 19th century america uh you can see some of the same research that he's putting into this happening in the exile where you know he's essentially done i mean i think that uh i interview that uh, i was putting together uh with him for with somebody from diamond he was saying that the research period on the exile was like four years wow <laughs> yeah. And then it took him two years to draw it. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's four years worth of reference material, because especially like, you know, so so these are actually fairly like these are things that are enough within living memory that, you know, you can look at a photograph and say, OK, what did a town look like? Where yeah. did this guy live? What this might what this might have looked like? You know, we've got the power lines and, you know, automobile uh, and all of these sort of like encroaching technological things that have been documented, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you're wanting to make a book that takes place in Iceland in 1670 or whatever, I mean, those are not options that are available to you uh, in terms of research materials. It's more along the lines of like, well, geez, how did they churn butter? How did, when did they get horses? Uh, how did they build their houses? Yeah. Uh, how do they protect themselves from the cold? What kind of clothes did they have on? What did a mantle look like? And how would you have made it without a forge? You know, what type of forge did they have? Uh, you know, those are the types of things that you start getting into when you make a book like The Exile. Um, and, uh, you and you know, he's and, got and you have to rely on like other people's drawings. And like if that if that uh, culture didn't have like realism baked into <laughs> what they were doing, you may right. not even have good visual representation. So you're turning to, I'm assuming, academic articles where they're having to do archaeology and recreate it or. Yeah, and and uh, the exile actually has a really, really large 
um, a really large uh, bibliography in the back mm. uh, that gives you a taste of, you know, how <laughs> the two dozen books uh, that are involved in uh, in constructing it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, but, you know, you could see this kind of similar sort of thing for an artist who doesn't live in America to be doing all these songs set in America, uh, you know, he's essentially relying on that kind of inquisitive nature to develop, uh, you know, to develop each of these short stories. Yeah, this book, you know, another thing, like I'm thinking uh, David Lynch, but or, is that the right name? Mm -hmm. That artist, uh, um, but also Tim Lane, because this is so Americana and, mm -hmm. and Tim has done some of this like black, white and one one gray that looks like it's also done with the brush. Uh, and then John John McNaught stuff from like Kingdom and whatnot, where he uses like two or three colors. That that's the the exile in this book feel like right in the middle of those two approaches. Even in terms of like Tim Lane being more realistic and John McNaught being more cartoony, and this kind of fits in the middle where it's like rubbery but still really realistic. Right. What one of the things that sort of. Uh you know, sells that second color treatment for me. And, you know, color in general is applied to line art. It, you, you know, when you really see like, okay, this is used for pushing this back. So we've got like an uh, envi deep environmental perspective, atmospheric perspective, yeah. just by having this rendered solely by the second color. Uh, I, that's when you really, you know, see the color itself firing on all cylinders. It's really selling the book itself, you know. Uh, because it's part of the artwork it's integrated it's not just something that happened after the fact you know he didn't just sit down and draw this in one color and then expect his studio mate to come in and <laughs> you know, pop the yeah. second color on there you know when you get those objects that are entirely drawn in the second color yeah it really steps apart like his hand is evident in every every little piece right or this edge here so these edges on the figure don't even exist except with the second color so it's not like he put down an ink line right here well that's what i really appreciate most about a lot of people that are using this like two-tone thing is that they're really moving away from line altogether like even though he has a lot of tapered lines and stuff it really this is all shape like mm -hmm. it's just shape 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 right and like anytime you get a tapered line it's just a tapered shape and um, there's there's something really appealing to me about that look. Uh, uh, there's something more natural about it. Like, you know, we don't have lines around us. It is just value changes at edges. So th this stuff looks more open and alive to me. Like, I feel like I'm participating in resolving the image right. in a different way that's, that's closer to how I resolve visual information when I'm exploring the world in my actual body. Um, it's totally. interesting. I'm definitely, this is a technique that I'm working on stealing. I, the, I mean, Matt's doing it in uh, House of Fire, and right. um, I, I just really like the look. I think it's potent. Uh, from a storytelling perspective, uh, when you get to read The Exile, uh, you will uh, note that there's some relation to this in that a lot of these murder ballads contain, uh, you know, animals as a po portents, Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, you know, animals as communicators or sort of uh, spiritual events that could be, um, you know, interpreted as physical phenomena or as some type of extra physical phenomena, mm -hmm. uh, whether that be spirits or, you know, manipulations from beyond the grave or things along those lines. Um, that kind of atmosphere that is happening in, uh, in murder ballads suffuses uh the exile as well also really nice horse here <laughs> beautiful horse it's interesting though like i hadn't thought about it even though i know in all the build-up to this you keep going back to him saying that this is his his viking western right. um i hadn't really attached that to this but this you can see where he had like went and saturated himself in americana for so long and kind of picked up some of that flavor probably mm -hmm. and then went back to um something i mean it's not set, closer to home yeah closer to home that's what i was going to say it's 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 not set like he's from the netherlands correct mm -hmm. yep so it's it's not set in home but it is like scandinavia region yeah. 
Um, so that's interesting that he he went afar and then brought back a flavor and then is looking more at his own history with that. That's that's intriguing to me. Yeah, and um, you you can you can definitely see like a kind of continuity uh, from that. I don't think that that's an unusual process either in terms of uh, you know venturing out into the world and take you know finding something that's interesting and compelling to you and then sort of bringing it back. Uh, you know, Eric, Eric is a banjo player as well, and mm. uh, I would not be surprised if this book started with, we're going to hopefully ask him sometime soon, but I wouldn't be surprised if this book didn't start with the songs themselves, you know. Yeah. Uh, this particular one is not an old song. This is Kay, this is an adaptation of a Gillian Welsh song, Caleb Meyer. Uh, Gillian Welsh is another figure. I mean, it's similar to Eric in a certain kind of way in that she uh, mastered an earlier mode of music and then is using that to make, you know, stuff that's not regressive, uh, but mm -hmm. is instead like a co continuation of the things that happened before. Uh, similarly, you know, if you took like a single image from this, you might think that, oh, you know, this guy's suffused in the past, you know, he's making something that looks like it could be a spot illustration from a 1940s or 50s paperback. Um, but on the other hand, he's using a form, a graphic novel, that barely existed during that time. Uh, it was interesting to see some of the reviews of this that were comparing some of the endings to like EC comic stories or something like that. Uh, yeah, it kind of has that look to it too, with like the real like high contrast images. And I know EC played around with different types of like second tones or a lot of those artists use ink washes and stuff. Um, but I mean, like that panel on the left in the middle that long pan well i mean e any of those panels really like ex that whole left page though like i can see like especially where they're screaming and grabbing their head and right that's that's very ec kind of johnny craig mm -hmm. yeah the 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 thing that um that kind of sets it apart for me uh <clears throat> is not just the sort of long form aspect of it but also sort of the uh you know there's a certain kind of flatness, emotional flatness to the EC, a lot of the EC stuff. Um, uh, yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that was just like pure like genre stuff. Right. I mean, the other thing is, is like writing in comics has just gotten to the point where you trust the audience. Like I know those EC things are hold up in really high regard, but I have a really hard time reading them. And if I do read them, I skip all the captions because the captions are like totally irrelevant to understanding yeah. the story most of the time you can just read the dialogue um and i think comics in general has moved away from that and obviously here he has moved away from that so that feels more contemporary to me as well that he now trusts the audience that like he doesn't need to write like so and so runs away through a packed forest while <laughs> <laughs> like she's just obviously that's a picture of a woman running through a forest right no definitely uh that that is definitely an aspect of it um so, so it's less uh, cluttered like ec comics always look so cluttered because there's the image and there's the dialogue and there's the captions and they're cramming it all into eight pages i feel like he's taking that aesthetic and just letting it breathe right and, and that's where it feels contemporary and then the exile is like okay now we're gonna expand that right aesthetic and, it, and, and and definitely this is i would say a page like this is is uh would be a very dense page in the exile uh you know the exile is uh has a sort of uh rolling um pacing to it that uh yeah. you know the I, I think just by the nature of these being short compressed stories um it's a little denser well and i think too in the exile he has more colors available to him i would sure. have to go back and look at it but my sense of it is that the black is a little i mean there's stuff where he's going really intense with the black but it it feels like the black is more uh i don't know oppressive in this book which fits the tone of it right. and there's a lot of that in the exile but having that the warm cool contrast because he's working with the reds and the blues right um seems to add like a little bit more lightness to the art as well yeah no it definitely feels like more like a uh, daytime lit whereas basically everything in this book or la large portions of this book feel as though they're they're happening in nighttime uh, regardless of the actual <laughs> you know yeah regardless it, of the actual uh, time yeah it's an interesting 
and, and just having that extra warm, cool contrast allowed him to get like these each story has to have a like the color is picked to create a mood um but w when you get the warm cool contrast i just really feel like he's able to expand that atmospheric perspective he's able to get more emotional resonance out of it the kind of pop of the compositions is more intense because you can play those things against each other so it really seems like the logical next step like okay i'm going to push this process one step further now right um, and it's i mean it's gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous sorry i've been like out of out of all the books that i know that you have coming this is the one like you know i've stoked about all of them but this is the one where the art i'm just so excited to like see it on the paper you know i've seen it now on screen a few times but it's like ah, i can't wait to see this in print because yeah. it looks like printmaking to me right um, and i can't wait to see it take on that form well, uh, I hope that you all will uh, go up, pick out uh, your copy of In the Pines, Five Mur Murder Ballads by Eric Creek. But even more important than that, because this one is already out there, it's already ready for you. You know, and you it's from Fanagraphics, it. so yeah, you know, whatever. They don't need your support. No, no, get a copy of it. But before you do that, please go and pledge for The Exile. Here is my Dutch copy of the book, and you can get an idea of approximately what it's going to look like. This is a hefty chunk of book. How do you say the title in? Ooh, what's this? Oh, <laughs> sexy. How do you how do you say that title Ooh. in Dutch, Sean? Are you gonna do this to me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard it out loud. The balling. The balling. It's two L's. It's not an I. So the balling. <laughs> B. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to uh, ask Eric if we can persuade him to uh, do an interview. Uh, but um, it, it is on Kickstarter now, and it is on. Uh, it is available to pre-order through your local comic store as well. Um, really do. A, can you give me a look at the the sexy red and blue combo on a page there? Yeah, let's see. Find, find us a preview image. I mean, the cover has it to some extent, but yeah, there you go. And that pop is like he's taking that thing that he was doing in murder ballads, and there's that warm, cool contrast for it. Woo! That's pretty. Yeah, it is a wild book, and uh, it, it's a really pleasure to be able to bring it to audiences. And I'm hoping that the audience uh, will will come. So you guys are the first audience, and uh, so please, please, please pledge early and pledge often. And we'll uh, have a uh, linkies to the Kickstarter down there. So go get your book. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to a, some family troubles that have to be resolved. And this is told in just this amazing, like, kind of three-color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something it's absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up make sure to like smash that subscribe button and ring that bell <laughs> <laughs>